you don't really get too much of a view of anything. Uh, the inside of the house, of course, that's all curtained up, so you can't see it from the outside. Um, see if we can take a look at uh, security cameras. Of course, another interesting little factoid about this house, there's no mailbox. Oh, there's a mailbox there. There is a mailbox. The front looks pretty cool. It looks, I guess, pretty well taken care of. As you approach, there's an eyeball there. Another eyeball right there. So you got cameras pretty much all over the perimeter. You want to make sure that every last square inch is covered. So nobody can get in unannounced and I really have no problem with announcing myself. I'll try and get a little pan over the wall. That's about it. That is the Hubbard House. There is a modern car out there, so I'm guessing somebody actually is here. I believe the place does have a caretaker, but uh, that's it. <coughs> the backyard and its interesting little uh, booby trap. Um. Now here's another interesting thing to note. These rocks are pretty well raked so that you have one tire track coming in and one tire track going back out. No, obviously not a whole lot of traffic. Not a whole lot of visit people visit the place because uh, if you're not a Scientologist, you're not allowed to go in. Uh, their story is that it has to do with their, with their 501c3 in that they can't be seen to operate any kind of business, not even a museum. So you would think that a museum would not be so stringently covered by the 501c3. Well, it's not. Um, any 501c3 organization can operate a museum. What, scient what Scientologists don't want is they don't want to give away anything for free. Now this particular cactus right here, this is a cactus that I, one of the cactuses that I was referring to, that is a very effective booby trap cactus. Uh, those quills, if you brush up against them, they will actually be shed by the cactus and uh, they have uh, obverse facing barbs which basically means that as you move around, the, uh, the quill will continue to work its way into your skin. That's the one that can work its way all through anything, all the way up to denim. It doesn't have to penetrate on the first uh, jab, because as you continue to move, it will continue to jab further and further. That's that little backyard bench that Hubbard sat there while his mind was blown on Vistaril. Uh, Hubbard was, was taking Vistaril for quite some time. In fact, his autopsy report showed that uh, he had Visteril in his system when he died, and he had just gotten an injection in his, uh, his left butt cheek, and there was a Band-Aid on it. Uh, that's available online. There's the backyard, pretty much overgrown to the point that you really can't see much of anything. There's one thing uh, I noticed that was uh, conspicuously missing, is that his car is not in front. Uh, they had the car parked there for the photograph, but then uh, apparently the car doesn't actually reside here at the house. Looks like the roof needs some work. Um, there's buckles and missing roof tiles. So, so much for restored. It looks like it actually kind of needs some work. But the damn sure took care of the cameras. So they made sure to get the cameras in there. They spent all kinds of money on this, the video surveillance equipment. Uh, backyard it was desert scaped so that there's no maintenance required uh, they can let the cactus grow wild and then when the cactus grows wild of course then it'll just burn the shit out of anybody that, that comes into the backyard here's the one clear shot of the backyard right here the pool it's there kind of surprised that nobody's come out to greet me but that's fine
And that's it. This is the L. Ron Hubbard crap hole. This is the place that he was living in when he fabricated this, the cult of Scientology.